Good evening, everyone. Welcome to that sewing vlog. We are going to have a fantastic time tonight because we have to, because you know who's coming on? Angela Wolf. And anytime she's here, it is fabulous. So we're going to be talking about personalizing your makes. And it looks like people in the audience really like Angela too. So don't worry, she'll be here in two seconds. So I just wanted to go over last episode that we had, we had Julian Roberts on from Subtraction Cutting. He created this brand new way of pattern cutting. Now that interview will be available for everyone to see on December 10th. It was our Patreon only live stream today. And that was fantastic. And then on YouTube right now, if you're interested, the replay from our interview with Vero Pinson from Sakuten. She makes great bag patterns. So if you want to check that out, it's on YouTube now. And she gave some really good tips on bag making. It was a really fun show. And if you go to the website, you can find all of our past shows and links to the ones that are available to watch, including the one with Angela Wolf. That was number 105, where we just interviewed and talked about her sewing story so goodness me check out the website www.thatsewinglab.com if you'd like to check that out so it's time <laughs> we're going to invite the fabulous angela wolf up i like when you think about personalizing your makes i don't know how you don't think of angela wolf first she does so many fabulous she just personalized her makes so many different ways if you watch her live streams which she does on facebook regularly she's also like where isn't angela wolf she's at great shows she's she's amazing absolutely amazing she's a pattern maker pattern designer goodness you have a like a, a resume a mile long because you are <laughs> so talented you are awesome don you made my night i wish win was around the corner <laughs> did you hear that win <laughs> like awesome. no thank you it's so great to see everyone tonight it's so so i love being on your show and i cannot believe the last one was 105 you said that's 60 some episodes ago i know it goes by fast and i don't do them once a week like sometimes you have two live streams a week don't you yeah actually i do about four or five oh. i have a private uh, group facebook our fashion sewing club that we do our private q a's so it's just kind of part of the program now yeah and definitely like this isn't just me saying you know like oh read this book or do this i i like watching these live streams so definitely follow her on facebook because she doesn't just tell you what she's doing she gives you great tips on lots of different things and yeah it's just pretty amazing now of course we might mention some products and things on the show tonight she is sponsored by brother um, but that doesn't mean if we mention something else that brother, you know, bro there to do with brothers, but she'll mention anything like that. Yeah. I just want to make it clear. I am yeah. a brother brand ambassador. I always say that because someone will say, what's your favorite machine? I'm like, well, I'm a little biased. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have so many great ones to work with, so it's understandable. Yeah. So yeah, we wanted to get all that out of the way. So tonight we're talking about personalizing your makes. So I have a quick question for you. I would love to know, like, when you first started sewing, did it take quite a while before you started personalizing your makes? Because I just can't even imagine you not personalizing something sometimes. You do such a fabulous job. Did it take quite a while before you got brave enough? And what was maybe that first kind of personalizing that you did? You know, it's that's a really good question. I was actually just going through photos. And you know what? We just I think he put, oh, if they were on my desk, I'd pull them up. You would crack up. I think oh. I was like six years old i just found this whole batch of old photos we just did this huge purge and got rid of a bunch of stuff organized the house is so clean you could eat off the floor like i might as well enjoy it for a month but i found these photos and i was six years old and i had this bonnet hat on and i said to my mom i remember sewing that and she said yeah she was trying to get me off her sewing machine because i wanted to touch the pedal and i could hardly see it was one of those old singer ones yeah and it was red with white polka dots and i was not satisfied with that i wanted to do some form of stitching all over it and i was six so i think <laughs> i've just been like that forever but you know for for real though i've always even before i worked with brother i did a lot of hand stitching hand dyeing i always wanted my own fabrics someday i'll have my own fabric line it is I haven't had the offer yet, but if it comes, <laughs> I'll be all over that. But then when the embroidery machines came out and it's so easy to customize your own fabric, that's what I love. It's something different. And that's why I sew. And that's why many of us sew, to have our own unique, a good fit and unique style. 
and it's yeah more more and more you'll see that there'll be like one pattern that everyone's just loving um whether it's the delilah or whatever and i mean you're like oh there's only so many different ways you can do it but there there is endless possibilities when you think that you can personalize them to different ways different fabrics to, you know like there's just so much you can do right okay so, so don i have a question for you not yeah. that i'm allowed to ask questions but <laughs> oh please do i love this <laughs> what is your favorite way to change fabric up a little bit do you have one goodness um I like hand stitching. I have a, a couple examples that I've done. Um, I have done some um, machine embroidery um, because my um, sewing machine does have that. You could draw something and then plug it into your computer and, and do that. So um, yeah, and then I, I, I do screen printing. So um, I, I like that as well, but I- That I, is I, next. I, That's next yeah. on my bucket list. Oh yeah, it, it is a lot of fun. It's messy though. It's messy. It's not as uh, you can embroider while watching TV, but it's you can't do the same thing with it when you're screen printing. But yeah, I I, I just I think uh, I don't know. When I was younger, I think I didn't want to. I was afraid of how standing out. I wanted to, but I was kind of like so. You'd wear like similar silhouettes, and then maybe just do a little something, you know, mm -hmm. like a, an embellishment or something. Um, now I really don't care. You know, I think you come into yourself when you get older and I don't mind standing out, but I still love all those little details, whether even if it's hidden and it's in, inside on the back of your collar or something, just knowing that it's a little bit more personalized. It's lovely. Right. I okay. actually have two pieces of fabric on the other side. I just finished washing a bunch of fabric, getting ready for the next taping of It's So Easy, but I have two pieces of Silk Dupioni that's so iridescent and I'm getting ready to needle felt. I might do it live on my Facebook show tomorrow, but the needle felting destroys the fabric, but it makes it so cool. So that's next on my bucket list for tomorrow. You watch your live streams. There's embroidery, couching. You were talking about how you love couching, all these different things. It's, it's, uh, it's very, very inspiring. <laughs> but what you said though, you can do it by hand. You don't, you know, if you don't have a, a I, it's a luxury of my uh, business is that, you know, I test these new machines. When I sewed for years for customers, I had a basic sewing machine. I didn't have, I had embroidery on it barely, but I didn't know how to use it, nor did I care because <laughs> it wasn't on my radar. Now it's so easy. Back then it wasn't so easy. But, you know, I love hand stitching. I would hand stitch embroidery. I would hand stitch um, actually couching. I didn't even know it was called couching back then. I would add yarn all over my design. So it, you don't have to have the best of the best, but you can still embellish and the best thing is when you're sitting watching TV because it gives you something to do. <laughs> and vice versa. There's some people who will do anything not to hand sew anything. And you can, whether it's with a, a top of the line, awesome brother machine, or like this is a, was a really old book. Oh, and look it, at that. It, it, um, it was a reprint. And it, I mean, you could look at something like this and all of these are done on machine stitching. So, I mean, I would not have thought that was machine stitching. So apparently cool. um, you can do um, a bunch of different things. I mean, I, you have to do some weird stuff to get some of those to work. Um, <laughs> but you can, if you don't want to do any hand stitching, there is that possibility to do things that way as well. Debbie says she loves old books. Yes, <laughs> they're fantastic. I have a little bit of a problem. I must not buy any more books. <laughs> I have, I do too. I didn't take you to my living room because I have a library and uh, <laughs> fabric books. I don't know what's, you know, all in the family. <laughs> Anything to inspire you, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, we have some photos of some of the things that you've done. Now, some of them people might have seen, but it'd just be neat to hear a little bit the story behind them, like what inspired you and, you know, how long do they take? Things like that. And there's going to be a big combo of something that takes 10 minutes to 100 and I think 160 hours is one of them. <gasps> oh, I can't wait to see. <laughs> we should all guess in the comments which one's 160. <laughs> so this is one of, it was a, actually the models are all from some of the brother machines from their manuals. I designed these clothes for brother years ago. Um, not all years ago. But the one on the left, the jeans, some people have heard me tell the story. That was my first embroidery project ever. Can you believe that? The jeans. It was three hoopings on each leg. And I think it was 26 or 29 and a half hours a piece. <laughs> that was your 
first. <laughs> Holy yeah. cow. I hadn't even embroidered a towel. I embroidered like <laughs> I knew how to use him. Like I learned how to use the embroidery machine and brothers said, and those are my custom jeans. And they knew I designed custom jeans for customers. And they said, Hey, will you design us a pair of jeans with embroidery? I said, yes. And there you go. So I would, and that was on a one needle machine. That was back when the quattro was around. And the only tip I have for everyone on that is because I embroidered half the leg. It took out half the stretch. So those jeans fit perfectly without embroidery. And then take out half the stretch of a leg. And yeah, it was a little tight. But that was my first. And then each one after that, the dress. And I saw somebody ask this question. Do you embroider um, as you go or just on the fabric first? The dress in the middle, I actually sewed all the princess seams first and embroidered. So if you screw up, you you're... I just make more embroidery so you don't screw up. <laughs> so it looked like an added element. But the, the dress I actually embroidered as it was sewn. And then the skirt on the right is a great example. And the photo to the right, um, that's perfect in there, by the way, because I actually laid that fabric out, chalked in the skirt design, and embroidered all over it. And then made my own fabric with that, which was pretty cool. And I do that a lot. But I would say 90% of the time, I actually sew the garment and embroider so I know where it's going. That, oh, goodness. That's a good question. Thank you for asking that question. And we have a close up of the actual jeans. I can't believe that was your first foray into embroidery. <laughs> yeah. So that's the photo. So the wolf pack in here, I see all of you in here, and you guys are awesome for being here. That's the photo that I always talk about when I'm teaching where I tell them. So that's me in those jeans. And this is the funniest thing because I made those jeans years ago. <laughs> and I could hardly get them on because I took half the stretch out of the leg. Otherwise, they'd fit perfectly. So I went to the photo shoot thinking that I'm just going to be watching this great photo shoot. And then I had to put the jeans on. And I remember thinking, I put the wow. jeans on, I was thinking, oh my gosh, I hope I put that button on good because that's gonna that sucker's gonna fly off and hit the camera. <laughs> and so notice I have one leg totally straight and I'm hardly even touching the chair. So <laughs> end of story. That's that's what we call the rest of the story. But uh, that was my first learning lesson to adjust for the embroidery. But isn't it they turned out pretty cool, I think. They are amazing. Absolutely amazing. And the jacket is too. Yeah, the jacket I did uh, a few years later, they wanted a matching jacket. And that now travels with me to a lot of the fashion shows. That's my Blair jacket. The pattern isn't out yet, but it will be someday. But mm -hmm. I actually cut the sleeves out and cut out the whole collar and facing. So when I embroidered, I knew exactly where it was going. So that's how the flowers are in such right places. And yeah, yeah. otherwise you'd be embroidering a whole piece of fabric and cutting it up. And is that jean as well? That's, um, yeah, it's a stretch, white stretch denim. And then these. One, one tip I'd give back on that is that um, with the jeans, I used a medium weight tear away because I really didn't know about all the different stabilizers. I mean, the embroidery turned out great, but you also have to wear it and yeah. they're really scratchy. So I would not use the medium weight tear away on that again. I would probably use more of a fusible, the, the fusible because it'd be softer against the skin. And on the jacket, I got smart. Well, by then I'd been embroidering so much. That's when I always threatened to embroider the cat. So we were like <laughs> addicted to it. So the sleeves are, I actually used a lightweight tear away and then I lined them with silk. So when you put them on against your skin, it feels soft. So just a tip there that you have to consider what's going to go against your skin. That's a great tip. And I, I, I really, I feel like I need to look at you for this. I really, really love that you don't just share everything and make it look all Instagram perfect and look, it worked out perfect every time and I never make any mistakes. I mean, you, you share them and they're always these lovely stories um, that make you laugh and they make you feel like, yeah, if I make a mistake, you know, I can make it work. You know, It's, uh, it's inspiring. I like that. 
I'm glad to hear that because you know if, if you think it otherwise you you'll if you screw up you feel mortified and you won't do it and I'm just trying to help you out I'm saving you like a couple steps if you screw up worse then share it with me so I don't do it <laughs> yeah that's great about the sewing community too that everyone shares Linda has a question she wants to know can you use stretch thread to embroider with stretch thread hmm I haven't at this point mm -hmm. but I don't know why you couldn't um, I have actually used woolly nylon, but it's hard to get to the needle, so it gets a little tricky. But I haven't really tested like the other stretch thread, like Elo Flex from Coates and Clark or any of those. I haven't tested that on embroidery. Great question, though. I mean, mm. I mean, it'd be fun to test it. I have used stretch thread in the bobbin to create different effects because it'll stretch. You know, when you wind the bobbin, you stretch the thread a little bit so it's tight, and then when you but I haven't done actual hoop embroidery. I've done decorative stitches and things like that, and it crunches the fabric. But I haven't used it in the needle, so I can't help much on that. But it's kind of – I have a feeling I'll be testing that this week because that sounds kind of fun. Yeah, <laughs> see what happens. I imagine yeah. you do a lot of testing. <laughs> I do, and, you know, if if it turns out terrible, it turns out terrible. But I usually mm -hmm. test it on a small swatch, even no matter what I'm embroidering. So the gowns you have up right now, the one on the right, I tested – every single embroidery design on a piece of tool before I made the gown. Because if it's going to not turn out, you got to have a solution before you make that whole dress. Oh, yeah. You don't want to start and, yeah, goodness. Because And, wow, are they gorgeous, all, all of them. But those are, so the story behind those, those are also dresses that I designed for Brother. And the one on the right was on the cover of the Luminaire. And that dress took over 140 hours. All the designs, all the designs on everything I'm using here were actually built in the machines. And that was the whole key is to use those. So that those designs are built in and that's all embroidery on tool. So it's basically embroidering on naked fabric. <laughs> yeah. And I used wash away stabilizer for that, washed it away. And I actually built the dress as I embroidered. So for the tool on the bottom, I just added embroidery in different places. But for the tool on the top, I first embroidered the center section and then embroidered the sides. And on tool, you you build a base underneath. So you can see the dress underneath. And then I added the tool over it. So you could do that to a simple top. It's, the sleeves are embroidered, which is one of my favorite. I call them removable tattoos. And <laughs> As long as you build a dress, you can put this over anything. Even if you bought a dress and you want to jazz it up a little bit on your own, if you embroider on tool, you can hand embroider the design, or you can hand stitch it, or you can stitch it on, but embroider on a piece of tool. If you like it, attach it to a garment. If you don't, toss it out. You didn't waste anything except some time. And they're quite nice on their own, too, like the, uh, the tool layers. I didn't make, but I bought some fabric um, that was black and had flowers all over it. And it makes a great little, almost like a, a, a long duster coat with no collar, just, you know, loose and flowy. And I put it over jeans or you put it over a black dress and put a belt on it. It looks like you made a dress. Right. Um, That's yeah, a great so, idea, by the way, because that would look great over a pair of jeans with a black turtleneck or something in my neck of the woods. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it's, it, you wouldn't think that tool and especially embroidered tool could be versatile, but it really is. Mm-hmm. And um, in the other picture, you can see you have one of your tattoo sleeves there. <laughs> that was the, that's the outfit that I, <laughs> I got in a little trouble. I wouldn't say trouble, but uh, that's, this was at a fashion show in New York for Brother. And this was uh, for Project Runway. So there were some other guests from Project Runway that were on Project Runway. I was just there for Brother. The, the wedding dress on the right is a dress that's in my studio now that I designed for Brother. It had embroidery, scan and cut, quilting. It had just about everything in it. The one on the left is a cotton sateen, and you can't see it really well in this photo, but the red pieces are also um, dupioni, or, and I needle felted them and added embroidery. So those are like two major works of art that I did for them. And then my outfit, I had to make, um, they told me about the party on Thursday and I was flying out on Monday and I thought, I got to have a new dress. 
really like anybody would have ever known, but I would have. So I had to make a quick dress. So I whipped up this jersey knit dress and the one sleeve you can see is all embroidered. Well, I did that on an episode of It's So Easy. My husband came in and he said, hey, are we leaving for the cottage? And I said, no, I have to embroider a whole other sleeve. And he said, he was so serious. He said, you know what? I think one arm sleeves are in style. So thus the dress with the one arm sleeve. <laughs> and then it has embroidery all over it. And it looks in a photograph, it looks like tattoos. Mm -hmm. And Wynn's not on Facebook. So his buddies were calling and calling him and saying, oh my gosh, do you know your wife tattooed her whole arm? What is going on with her? <laughs> Not that it would be bad, it's just that I can't even handle a pinprick. So the dress, we call that the trouble dress. And it ended up with one sleeve because we left for the cottage. <laughs> I think it's absolutely gorgeous. You look amazing. Yeah. I still wear it. I love that dress. It's so comfortable and it's a jersey knit. So it rolls up in your suitcase and I hide the sleeve. And do you know that dress? Jersey knit and the tool I put in the washer and dryer, no problem. If you put it in a laundry bag or you like a mesh bag, it protects the sleeve, wash it, dry it, and you're good to go. I didn't know that about the tool. That is a fantastic tip. Care. Now, I don't think I'd put those two wedding dresses in there. No. But I have jackets that have tool sleeves, and all of those go in the wash and dryer. Is like Ponte knit, things like that, easy care and easy to travel with. It's very good to know. And let's see what's the next one. So exciting. Oh, it's a close up of um, the other dress and some jeans. And I like um, how you switched up the print on here. It's lovely. Yeah. So, okay. The dress, there's the dress that was at the, that was behind stage at a Pew Wallop last year. So I did a fashion show there last year. I think I had maybe 74 garments or something like that. There was 800 people there. It was a crazy fashion show. And at a sewing event, you know, I, I told my friends that, and they said at a sewing event, but it was awesome. Have you ever been to Puyallup, Don? No, no. I see some of the conferences you go to. And, yeah, you should, if you, if you can't go to them, follow her so you can see her at them. It's amazing, the things that, that was, are there. That show was a big one for garment sewing, which I was really excited about. That one and OSQE, they both seem to have a lot of fashion shows and things like that, which is cool. You know, it's glad. I love seeing people getting back into fashion mm -hmm. sewing. Not that I don't like quilts, but I just want to wear it. Yeah. And then, that was a blog post I did for Brother uh, a while ago. And those jeans I was getting ready to get rid of, not get rid of, I was donating them. And I needed a blog post. And I thought, you know what, I'll embroider them and somebody else can enjoy it. And so I opened up the outside legs to do the embroidery because if you open up the inside legs, you got all that top stitching to do. They turned out super cute. So now I, they're still in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> I'd keep those. <laughs> yeah, and I used a fusible, it was like a lightweight fusible on the inside. So it didn't rub. I learned <laughs> they're nice and soft on my legs now. Oh yes. And was that one hoop? Cause now, nowadays they have enormous hoops, don't they? And they're magnetic yeah. ones. And oh. that was one hooping on each leg, which is great. Those longer hoops. I know there's like, some people say, I don't like them, but you know, they've come so far. And I mean, I obviously I'm biased, but the new hoops have metal on the sides on the new brother machines. There's metal. So they don't flip and flop like in the old days. And they have a really good stable embroidery line. So for jeans, sleeves, I can do a whole sleeve in one hooping now, which is, it saves time, especially if you're using a one needle machine. I mean, which I use 90% of the time because I just like to see where everything's going. Sometimes I change up the colors halfway through. I mean, I just, I'm never normal. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's called creative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What is that picture with the black? Okay, so the one on the left is my new lace designs. I I came up with a, my first embroidery collection last year I, with a collaboration with Dime, and I wanted things that were that free flowing, but I sew them. I embroider them usually on tulle. It still looks like lace, but but it's just a different effect. So that's one of my lace designs. And you might have seen those in some of my photos. I attach them to the bottom of jeans, the bottoms of my shirts. I have them everywhere now. The one on the right is a, I just found this in my photos because we were talking about embroidery. I thought, oh my gosh, I forgot about this. I made this a few years ago and 
it was just a simple, I'll come up with a blog post for that because it was a simple envelope style purse. But I laid it all out. It's faux leather. It was like a vinyl from Joanne Fabrics. I think I bought it because I was just looking for something to embroider on. And I embroidered all these flowers on it. And you know, it turned out beautiful. At first I thought, all this embroidery on vinyl, it's not going to turn out. I used sticky back stabilizer, so I just floated the design, embroidered, and it turned out great. And I actually made a matching dress, which I couldn't find the photo for that. The dress wasn't leather, though. It was um, like a rayon but the same embroidery designs but just something an, a, something easy for if you guys are trying to refashion something this would be great to add to a pocketbook that you already have or make your own this was i can't re i'll look up the dimensions but you can kind of see it on there it was literally an envelope that's it and so i had the full leather on the outside embroidered it and on the inside i think i used a fleece and then just use piping around the sides and then sewed it together and it, the embroidery took the longest that took a while but yeah. that would be really cute on a skirt that's gorgeous and i mean sometimes when you see the you know um there's set designs that you can get and you're like uh what am i going to do with that um it, it just goes to show like you just turned it around you put a slightly different one you have different right. colors and it makes it look completely different so it's just about um being creative and thinking outside the box that is gorgeous yeah my big thing is if you have the capabilities on your machine to use the color shuffle that's i that's my first go-to because a lot of times i'm using designs built into the machine because that's what i'm that's what i'm doing and there are a ton of great designs but the colors you'll score you'll scroll through and play oh those are not my color zones and then you Go to color shuffle and you punch in the colors that you want it could be one ten however many colors you want to change usually for me it's five and under mm -hmm. and shuffle and then all of a sudden you come out with something fabulous that totally didn't look like the original but it's an idea the other thing is uh if you look inside your embroidery machine whatever machine you have if a design has all this stuff on it and but you like a just a couple things from it you can embroider and skip steps and that's what i did in that first skirt that we had is where that had a whole a whole bunch of more is that even a word bunch more yeah. <laughs> i can tell it's been in the evening a whole bunch more yeah. <laughs> added to that embroidery design and i didn't want it so i yeah. picked the parts i wanted and kept it all one color and it worked out great and that's why i used the one needle because i could stop and keep going and get more of a handle on what's going it takes longer but more control of what i want that's really cool, especially if you're gonna not just use it out of the box kind of thing, do it right. exactly as it is. We have um, quite a few comments in the side, lots of people saying like Linda and Debbie, Debbie saying they love the clutch and Marisol and um, they wanted to know what embroidery machine that you made your lace on. So that one is being made uh, right there is the 10 needle, the PR 1000 the brother PR 1000, that's where that's being made on. But if you go back through any of my blog posts, I have, I've done the same lace in white. I keep looking around because I usually have something laying around, but it's all <laughs> in my office. I'm at home tonight. Yeah. Um, I have done it on the uh, quad, no, not the quad show, the Dream Machine, the Luminaire, and now the Slayer. So all of those have been able to, it's, so the design, it's, um, so my lace collection has, I think, a hundred and over a hundred designs because it has the one big design and all the little pieces in it. And so this design is one of those blocks or two of those blocks that you can kind of see on there. And so I sewed quite a few of them in a row and then I wrap them around my sleeve um, and then I attach them. What I'll do is I'll find a shirt and then I'll cut off, cut off this part <laughs> and then attach the lace down here. And it's something that you can do to ready to wear. You don't have to make the shirt. I do usually. But um, the other thing it looks cool on is jeans. And that's one thing I'm mm -hmm. going to work on for next summer early because I always miss that. But um, And do it in a neutral color. There I think I embroidered with a rayon. But you could embroider with cotton, which would make it a little bit thicker. You could – sometimes I'll just use regular universal polyester thread. Huh. that I use for sewing because it gives a different texture. If I'm adding it to jeans or cotton, I use I almost always use universal thread and not embroidery thread specific because it gives it a whole different look and I don't want that shiny hmm. whatever 
look. You know what I mean? Have you ever attached one of them to like the back of a pocket or like a? a I have not. That would be very cute. Mm. So many possibilities with like like one that design alone and all the different places you can put it. I will say that that little purse. Uh, I'm getting ready to take season 19 of it's so easy which i cannot believe it's been 10 years <laughs> and i know time flies and that i'm doing that bag as one of i'm doing 10 wrap dresses believe it or not um, so <laughs> it's going to be all different styles of wrap dresses because it's so it never goes out of fashion nope. and you could use it for a bathing suit cover-up a wedding uh whatever there's so many different uses so that 10 Wrap dresses, and then that bag is going to be one episode. Wow. And you could do it with embroidery or without, but it's a very quick, easy bag. Ooh, lots to look forward to then. 19, that's amazing. <laughs> I know. 10 years. I was telling my husband, 10 years ago, this December, was when I went to audition for the show. They called and asked if I would audition. They hadn't started the show. And when they called, I said, I don't quilt. And they said, no, 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 it's fashion. <laughs> well, actually, no, I didn't like quilt. But at that time, I didn't. And we went on a fishing trip the, on Saturday. And we were the, my audition is on Monday. And we were fishing in the dark and in a oh. tournament. And I pulled back on the sinker. Well, my husband said jerk the rod and he didn't realize I had reeled it up so far and it's dark and it flew through the air and hit me in the head right here. And I ended up, this is a photo I did not share with you, Don. Someday, maybe on my deathbed, I'll share it because it's so horrific. I had a golf ball on the center of my head and I mean, it was so terrible. So I spent the whole day laying my head on the fish on the bottom of the floor that we caught. It was snowing out. And oh. you know, I woke up the next day and that whole thing was gone. I was ready to cut bangs and everything. So <laughs> my new beauty treatment is going to be to lay your head on a frozen steel head on the floor of your boat. <laughs> it was See, gone, not even mark. <laughs> fishing's good for you, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Debbie says she's not going to miss that series. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good thing. Yeah. And so we tape it in December. We're actually taping earlier than normal, but um, so that one will probably launch in end of March, April ish. Ooh, cool. I am looking forward to it. And then I have some other pictures. Um, this is another one of your tattoo sleeves, I think, which is really cool. Yeah, that was that's actually on the set of it. So easy. So that dress is my Evelyn dress pattern, and I just added a pattern hack to put a zipper in the front, and then um, those are my visible tattoo sleeves i'm pretty much adding the tool sleeves to everything because it's so comfortable and it looks cool so even though the silk dupioni that i'm going to needle felt tomorrow um i'm going to add i'm going to find some tool that's the same color so the interesting part about the tool is this tool is black mm -hmm. and the embroidery i used was it had some burgundy and silver so you can actually pick a color of tool to match your garment and it it still looks see-through. I mean, it does. It matches your skin, no matter what skin tone you have. So, um, the the big thing about when you pick out tool is to find something really soft. If it's too rough, it'll itch your skin, and and you won't like it. <laughs> You'll end up cutting the sleeves off. I, I see lots of people in the comments are talking about how they're part of the wolf pack. Is this? <laughs> oh yeah, that's. The <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Wolf Pack, we see you. <laughs> well, see you're me. in the Wolf Pack too. We, I would say that um, when I started the our Facebook group, Angela of Patterns, someone said, start a Facebook group so we can share what we're making. And I remember thinking, okay, uh, <laughs> it's one of my, uh, the first thing I do in the morning is go into that group to see what, it's amazing to see what everybody designs with my pattern. And I just give the pattern as a base and let their creativity come out. And I love what they do. It just, it makes my day. It's like my best friends. <laughs> <laughs> they are pretty amazing. Um, and it's definitely fun listening to their comments in, in your live streams, as well as over here. I always say hi to Connie too, because she's normally there. You, you start to recognize people in the live streams too. So it is a real community. It is. And goodness me this is um oh was this the wedding dress and this is you trying it on before um oh yeah so this isn't this is before i bought a new building now so this is my old office 
uh, where I was just like busting at the seams, as you can tell. <laughs> so I always make everything in my size. So if I gain weight, I'm in big trouble because <laughs> I don't want to make a whole new wardrobe. But I make everything in my size, and that way I can really adjust the fit, and I can tell the model, like when they hire a model, what size they are. So for me, it's easier and faster to do it that way than to hire a model to come in. Even a dress form still isn't going to be 100%. So this is the sleeve, and I was determining if I needed to add more embroidery or what. And you can see the top on the right. That's how it all started. And that's it's a uh, satin underneath and I embroidered on the satin for that one. And then I added, had to add two under layers so the uh, satin wouldn't wrinkle. That satin wrinkles so bad, it's terrible. I ended up two under layers and a lining. That thing is very heavy. It's, it's in my studio now on a dress form. And so I take it to some fashion shows, but it has to be a really, a bigger fashion show or one that there's a lot of care taken into how quickly they dress because I don't want it to get ruined because it's that dress took. I don't remember how many hours that dress took, but I'm thinking it was 180 to a, almost 180 to 200 hours is what it took. And it weighs close to 15 pounds, believe wow. it or not. But it doesn't wrinkle because of everything that I added to it, which is fabulous. But if it travels to a fashion show, it has its own suitcase. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's fabulous. Yeah. And obviously the sleeves were the littlest part on there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. I'm sure like, I don't know, Wolfpack, you'll have to tell me. Um, you'll have to tell me if you think so, Wolfpack. How many of you would like to, you know, just magically appear in Angela's closet? I bet you there is some amazing things in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See? Hey, you guys, be careful. I'm purging. I might be sending it to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I thought someone else might feel oh, the same way. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, wait. I got to show you this. Um, I think she's here too in the live group. <laughs> so I just came back from an event, and Lori Reynolds, I think I saw that she was in here. She saw me have. The, um, I, I'm a shoe freak. I love shoes. And I got this new pair of boots that had snakeskin on it. And do you know, she made me this gorgeous wallet and immediately I love it. And she said, it matches your shoes. And I go, oh my gosh, it matches my shoes. So, Lori, thank you, by the way. This thing is sweet. <laughs> I'm not giving this away, but I would give some things out of my closet away. <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought people might, you know, think that would be a, a cool excursion. Yeah, yeah. She'd rather spend a few days in her workspace. Yes, I agree. That would be amazing too. Yeah. So I, I am actually, you know, I bought the building, the new building, which is much bigger. Than, I've always, I've been out in different offices for, I worked out of my house, out of my first condo from 1994. That's when I started my business until about 97. And when and I were dating, but we didn't live together. So then I bought a house because I figured, well, we're not getting married. I'll buy a house. So I bought a house. My whole house was work. And we lived like five blocks from each other. It was hilarious. And then he moved into the house. I, I talked him into moving into my house that when we got married and it was way too small and I had way too much stuff like for sewing. So I think it was 2003, I moved to my own office and then I just kept expanding. This is my last move, by the way, Don. I I bought the bank building. It's like <laughs> go big or go home, but I can't go any bigger because this is like a lot. But my my ultimate goal was to be able to host classes there and or retreats of some sort. And but I've booked so many other events that I haven't been able to. But um, there might be one event this October of 2020. Might be one, and then I'll plan for 2021 because I've already booked too much but maybe so you have to keep your ears open but <laughs> um october possibly there might be a few that get to come to the studio i'm sure there's some wolf pack people very excited right now <laughs> that's fabulous if you live yeah. close you could just drive down don oh i love it right on your uh, way to chicago pardon right on your way to chicago like come oh, down and around. <laughs> i used to live in kalamazoo michigan <laughs> you did yeah, for um, two years. 
I, how did I not know that? You were only like 30 minutes from me. It was gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. It was yeah. Oh, yeah. Small world. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we got a little off topic, guys. <laughs> but it happens when you talk to Angela. She's lovely to talk to. <laughs> so personalizing your makes. <laughs> when she was talking about putting lace on her sleeves, um, this is a different type than you were talking about, but that is like another great example. And even here with the black as well. Yeah, so the black is, that's my Linda tunic. We did a sew along on that with It's So Easy. It's been my most popular pattern ever, and it looks fabulous on everyone. So what I did is I took uh, a rayon, just rayon for the top, and then for the sleeve, I used a silk chiffon. And those are also my embroidery designs. And I just embroidered down the sleeve and added a little elastic. So I pattern hacked a little bit. Again, I used the wash away stabilizer, embroidered, washed it away, and then sewed it into this now on the chiffon i did not cut the sleeve first i actually laid out a huge piece well a piece of fabric that was about a little bit longer than my sleeve and wider embroidered to make sure i liked it washed it away then washed and dried the fabric because i knew it was going to wash and dry the top and then cut it out into a sleeve and it worked great the sleeve on the left is actually the cover photo not that photo but that's the top that's the cover of my lace collection and that one is my Delilah top and I just pattern hacked a little bit instead of having this whole section through here where I added um, binding I just inserted the the lace and so again I embroidered on tool because then I can use it if you embroider on tool you can use it as a trim instead of just freestanding lace so that's that one too I got a little carried away on the colors on that one but it's fun and um, even with the, the pink top, like you could, you took a basic uh, t-shirt and you've really elevated it, like how you not only have an insert along the bottom, but, or, and the other ones you have them on the, the where the cuff is, but here you have a, a stripe right around, I guess, the, yeah. your, your bicep. I just insert, inserted oh. that strip. And then at the bottom is that, that, the one at the bottom is that same design that we saw earlier with the black. But the reason I added these photos is because not everyone wants to sew from scratch or they don't have time, but they want to add something to a garment they already have. So I don't care what top you buy, you can add a little insert through here if it's something you embroider yourself or if you buy a trim, but it's a great time to experiment with embroidery because you embroider on tool, you have a little extra. All I did was cut off where I wanted it to go and I don't even think I added seam allowances because by the time you add the trim and then sew it into place, it's almost equal. Uh, and yeah. that's all I had to do. That's really cool. For the trim on the bottom, Oops. I left the shirt was hemmed and then I just did free motion to keep it in place. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and it's washed, um, it works great. This is phenomenal. That is, let's see, that was the cover of the Dream Machine or the Dream Machine 2. I don't remember which one. And they wanted me to use these two designs, and I have to laugh. Well, there's actually three designs. The one is a shell, well, it looks like a shell. One's a Christmas tree, and the other one is <laughs> like a snowflake. And I remember thinking, how am I going to get these three designs to look elegant? <laughs> Wow, you knocked it out of the park. That looks amazing. Thanks. It ended up being one of my favorites. So you can see, though, how I I actually sew the entire undergarment. So the under part is sat. Um, it was satin. And then there's lining in that. But I actually sew the whole top together, lay it out so I can move around the bus starts and things like that. And that's how, that's how all of this starts. And then I always try the top on before I send it out which you can see me there with jeans. That's at my old office, <laughs> my old studio. And I make sure it fits because I always tell them what measurements I want for a model and then they know, I'll know if they lied. Because if it doesn't fit, they know that at least it fit me. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to say, you really have a knack to, not only for making the lace designs, but for placement. Because if you see how that fits on your body, I mean, those, that placement is beautiful um it, like you could put things in the wrong spots and it could look wrong or have too big of gaps but that is really yeah stunning well you know that's funny you mentioned that because that's one of the biggest things when i'm teaching is to say that where are you going to put the design think of placement and 
you don't want headlights. You don't want, I have a great friend of mine. We still laugh to this day that uh, she was sewing a dress for herself and she came walking into my office and all I saw was this huge rose in a not good <laughs> location and I ended up making her a new dress because she was going to, she was the mother of the groom. I'm like, you can't go like that. That's like the photos are going to be awful. <laughs> you do have to think where you're going to put these designs. Like, where are they? And so that's one of the reasons that I usually sew my garment together as I embroider so I can see what's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's that really good. Always successful, but it's, I try. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is wow. I think we have a couple more embroidery slash inserts and then there's other types of personalization. So these are two. Yeah, so these are really simple and these, I, these are tops I made, but you could do this on something you already own. So the, the tank tops on the left, that is basically what I call color blocking where I sewed these from scratch. I have an entire episode of it's so easy. If you go to my YouTube channel, all of these episodes are on there. So you can just skip ahead to which one you want to see, but these are, I think this one was called lace inserts. So for pattern hacking, it's about the easiest you can do. It's a tank top. These were uh, based on either my Rouge T or my Rachel twin set. I don't remember which one I used, but they're both very similar. And all I did was cut off different areas and insert lace. And I was very careful to see where the lace went so I didn't have to worry about what I was wearing underneath. Mm -hmm. And then just add a ribbed knit around each edge and super, super easy, but you could also, a top that you already own, cut it up and add this lace insert and you're good to go. And then again, the jacket to the right is not a pattern yet. It's one I made years ago and I wear it to every event because it. this is one of the ones, the Ponte knit that I throw in the wash and dryer. And again, I embroidered on tulle and this has washed and dried a million times and it still looks great. Something mm -hmm. easy though. So if you bought yourself a jacket or even old, you know, one of the big things when I was getting rid of clothes and giving them away is I found a bunch of sweaters that I had that were too high. And I've always, I add zippers in there now and take the sleeves off and add tulle or something fun like that or lace because then you just totally changed your whole look in five minutes and then you're going to keep the top. I mean, not that I want to keep all these clothes, but <laughs> or update them before you give them away. I don't know. <laughs> And um, it's also good too, you know, thinking about reusing and if you can take something that's in your wardrobe and you're not wearing for some reason and then give it, you know, new life just by tweaking it like that, why wouldn't you? It sounds very exciting. Well, I was, um, you know, just out of curiosity, how many people buy a top because of the fabric? I mean, if I feel I'm a fabric person, I got to touch. And that with all the fabric stores closing, it's so sad because that's mm. part of the beauty of designing is touching that fabric so when i go shopping for clothes or whatever you touch that fabric that cashmere or that <laughs> awesome soft sweater <laughs> and you buy it and then you never wear it because it looks awful or you're wondering why you ever bought it except that you pet it because it's so soft well, why not turn it into something cool <laughs> yeah petting it yeah um Debbie's curious. She wants to know what stabilizer do you use with the tool? I use, um, oh, let me look up the name. Well, it's, I have my own brand now, but it's on my website, but it's called um, Wash Away, I believe. It's, it feels like fabric. Ooh, very cool. I have to look up the exact name, but it's Wash Away. Yeah, Wash Away is so much fun because you can like build your own fabric using Wash Away too, layering right. whether it's threads or a whole bunch of different pieces of material and sewing down on it. When it washes away, it has so many. And it literally things. now here's a couple things though for that is I've experimented with other brands too. So whatever brand you use, you know, it's your call. The for mine, it's it's um it's not sticky back because that does not work with tool. It's too thin. It's like. If you use just sticky back with tool, you're basically embroidering on glue. And not that it's not going to work, it's just more challenging. So I'll, I actually hoop the whole thing, the tool and the wash away, embroider, and then I'll cut away as much as I can, being very careful not to hit that tool because that tool is so easy to snip with your scissors. Mm -hmm. But I will rinse it with really hot water, really hot. I'll, sometimes I'll have to wear gloves. And you'll see a lot of it go away. And then Deborah Jones, full credit on this one, she gave a hint one day that she uses downy fabric softener with 
uh, one portion to 12 portions water and she would spray it. Well, I tried that and I, I was like, I got to get this over with. I don't have all day. So I <laughs> altered her <laughs> suggestion and I have a bowl that I put like a whole cup of like, you know, the lid, a whole cup of downy fabric softener and, and whatever flavor of the month <laughs> that smells the best <laughs> and hot, hot, hot water. And I mix it up with a spoon. And then after I rinse as much as I can with the hot water, I'll put the whole piece of fabric in there. And let it sit. I'll just stir it like a, I guess you would stew. I don't know if you're guessing that that's what you do for soup or something. <laughs> and then let it sit. Sometimes I'll let it sit overnight. I'm or an hour. It depends on my schedule for the day. You know, maybe it's an hour. Maybe it's two hours. Maybe it's a lot of times I'll bring it home, rinse it, and put them in little bowls on the counter. Go to bed in the morning. I throw them on the washer, dryer, and they're done. But that downy fabric softener really gets all of that sticky stuff out the hot water does hot hot water does awesome job then the downy gets the rest of it out and it also makes it super super soft super soft that is a great tip yeah <laughs> so i took deborah jones and added dynamite to it <laughs> <laughs> that works mm -hmm. now i think the first one is an applique so this is another way that you can personalize your makes and i mean the op options are endless or is it embroidery i thought maybe it was applique no nope, it's applique dot. the first one on, the one on the left is applique that's um i started with my evelyn dress and I actually sewed the dress together as much as i could and the applique those pink dots are uh just an inexpensive polyester lining and i put hmm. um, a backing on it and cut it on the scan and cut a gazillion circles. It was the most fun I ever had on the scan and cut. I still am finding circles in my new office. They're coming out of boxes. I don't know how many circles I cut, but I must have gotten a little carried away. And then you pull the backing off. I pressed it all in place. But because it's a garment, I had to go back and stitch around each circle. So I used a blanket stitch and stitched around each of those circles to keep them in place. So you don't sit down and lose a circle in a place you don't want to. No. Yeah. Very easy to do, and you don't have to sew from scratch on that. You could alter your ready to wear and add those circles. Something fun. Um, I mean, it's a great silhouette. The dress itself, it's it's fun looking. Kind of has was it nod to the '60s, but um, you put the dots on it, and wow, that just looks amazing. <laughs> I know. Not, and then my sister uh, gave me those shoes. She, you can't really see them there, but there were these like pink and purple super high heels. And I'm like, oh, these are so cute. She goes, you're never going to wear them. I go, I will for a photo someday. So give them to me. <laughs> but trust me, you can't walk in them. <laughs> well, it looks good. <laughs> and the fabric there is a stretch. It's not really a denim. It's more of a cotton sateen. So I lined it with cotton because if I lined it with something like ambiance or polyester, you'd see through it. And the cotton actually blocks, keeps the colors so you can't see through the white. Very good. And uh, the one on the right, that's the Linda tunic. I did that on It's So Easy. And that is uh, just, I have lace fabric. I didn't even make that lace. It was a leopard lace. And I just changed the sleeves to leopard and added a cuff at the bottom, which again, Adding a sleeve to something that you already own or changing the sleeves up is so easy. All you have to use is just a pattern that you have on your own or cut the sleeve off and use that as a pattern. And that's all I did there. And I gave that top to my sister. Such a quick and, well, very effective way to personalize your make just like that. Yeah. Right. And some more applique, gorgeous applique. Yeah, so these were just fun ones I included because, well, the one I call my fishing skirt, the white one, even though I've never worn it fishing, the goal is to wear it fishing, but <laughs> just because of all the sparkles. But again, I was experimenting with cutting fabric with the scan and cut, and so I cut it out, pressed it to the fabric. The one on the left is a jacket. The applique is a satin, a polyester satin, but a little bit thicker than the previous one we saw, and also thicker than the one on the right. So I cut out the design, added some blanket stitches around it to hold it in place. The skirt is different. That fabric that I use for applique is like a tinsely, uh, like nasty stuff that you would use oh, no. for, it's not nasty, but you wouldn't use it for garments. You would use it for sticking in a package or sticking in a gift bag. That 
that silvery stuff. I don't even I don't even know what the name of it is for. Uh, but I cut it out, attached it to the skirt. It looked awesome. And then I added some big embroidery designs over it just to hold it in place. And that way, I didn't want to embroider around each of those designs. So I just, again, went into my machine, found a big design, and just used part of it to embroider over it. And I, used, I embroidered over it with white so you couldn't see it, but it kept the design in place. Those are both something that you could do to something you already own. Just jazz it up for the holidays, jazz it up for a party. Um, and you could do that so fast. And if you don't like it, give it away. <laughs> but I mean, it's <laughs> like opportunities that you can go through your closet and say, you know what, I, I don't really ever wear this. So let me try this. And if you don't like it, give it away. Somebody else will love it or you're going to love it. And then you'll start wearing it again. That is really cool. And I didn't notice at first that you'd actually um, machine embroidered on top of the applique um, to hold it there. But that is very clever. Yeah. And that was just, just with, I think I actually just used, uh, I have this machine that I, a brother machine I got from Costco and I just set it on the blanket stitch and just kept stitching around the whole thing. So it wasn't even embroidery. I just followed the lines and stitch. It took, it was a little tedious, but I got it done. Oh, and those sorts of things, you know, there's one thing for popping out a t-shirt because you need a t-shirt, but if it takes you a little while to make something, you do appreciate it more because it looks different than everyone else's and you know the value of the amount of work that went into it. Absolutely. Yeah. Now these look very interesting. <laughs> So the one on the left is reverse applique. I was experimenting, and I think I have an episode of It's So Easy about this, that the peach is a skirt, and the things underneath, it's a reverse applique. So I applique over it, and then I applique the skirt. I added circles to it. I was just trying to see what this looked like. And then I trimmed with sharp scissors around it, rubbed it with a brush so it would get all fringy, and that turned out pretty cute, actually. The one on the right is needle felting. And that is what I'm going to do tomorrow with that new um, silk dupioni that I found. The needle mm. felting is just a bunch of needles that pierce the fabric. And you can see how bubbly it gets. And then I take it and I press it out and, and then make a jacket out of it. So tomorrow I have two pieces. The one is like a purpley they're iridescent. I got them at Vogue Fabrics. I love their silk dupioni and they're just different colors. They're way back there. I'd go grab them. But um, so when you puncture them, you don't know what color it's going to be. So I usually start at a corner. <laughs> if I don't like it, then I <laughs> go to plan B. <laughs> but if it looks good, then I keep going. Oh, that's really cool. I never it's even thought of doing that. Dupioni always, is always so fancy. And if you could stress it up a little bit you could turn so my idea is to turn it into more like a jean jacket style very casual even though you're using very expensive fabric i'll line it because that makes it look better and then i might do the tool sleeves or i'm going to do you'll have to just stay tuned but i might just embroider a piece of silk chiffon and make a bell sleeve with it i haven't decided yet i'll probably have to take a vote on that when i get going so creative so very very creative um lots of people chatting in the side about uh, not liking hand stitching or um poor sandy broke her wrist a while back and can't um and then press out the needle file thing what does that look like mary asked um <laughs> so hand stitch no never <laughs> yeah so is that why um i'm oh, sorry that's the one you're going to do a video for that soon for the needle, for felting, the needle felting, that's tomorrow. Tomorrow during the um, during my live show, I'm gonna needle felt those. Uh... Now, by the way, Sandy, my alarm. hand stitch, hand stitch <laughs> no. I um, actually used the sewing machine to do those blanket stitches. It wasn't by hand. So the needle felting, I'm gonna test tomorrow because I found, <laughs> I don't know if you're watching this, Don, but when I first moved in my studio, I couldn't find any of my boxes with all my needle felting attachments and I found them. And so my two pieces, um, are back there and I don't think I'm gonna wash them I think I, I I thought of testing to wash to see what the silk dupioni would look like but I think you know what I'm gonna end up probably dry cleaning the jackets anyway so I it's undetermined yet but mm -hmm. tomorrow tomorrow's the needle felting experiment and then I'll decide what I'm either gonna embroider on top of it or 
it's going to be a science project. Ooh, I'll be checking that out. And I love the idea that you're not doing like um because you I guess you can only have so many fancy jackets, but doing it uh, something that's like a very expensive fabric with an expensive look on a something that's more of a casual jacket. I love the juxtaposition to that. Sometimes it just looks so cool. Well, think of our you know our our wardrobes nowadays. I mean. I hardly ever, I don't even own a suit anymore. I mean, there might be one in there. I mean, I have my Chanel style shoot suits, but I wear those jackets with jeans. That's what we, that's just our wardrobe nowadays. And if you don't have to dress up more, why? I mean, I love dressing up to dresses, but I don't know. You got to make it fun. Yeah. I think that's why there's the popularity of uh, frock tails and uh, popping up all over the world is once in a while, we do want to wear something a little fancy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, goodness. So we have two more examples. Um, I was, is it, is that called faggoting the, the one with the pink, the white and the black, or is that just a different, something different? You know, it's something different, actually very close though. Okay. So that outfit, I threw this in here because this was one, an outfit I made years ago that made, um, I'm a member of ASDP association of sewing and design professionals. It used to be PAC. Uh, they changed their name. So we would have a fashion design contest through Threads Magazine every year. And this outfit made the finals. And it's all silk charmeuse on the inside. And so what I did is I made, I color blocked basically the tank top, had a separate panel for the neckline and then the tank top. And that's all, <laughs> Sandy, don't cry, but it was all hand beaded. So I hand beaded those lines through there to make that. And I did it all the way around the neckline and make it bigger it turned out really cute yeah so that's all hand beaded i was enjoying looking at it so much sorry guys i was looking at my side monitor where it's really big and like drooling over it and forgetting to make it big for you guys sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> so that's all hand beaded and i could probably bring that top uh, maybe i'll bring it live on one of my shows in the next few weeks to show it really close and that the jacket is a satin um cotton sateen the inside is silk charmeuse, but I treated the silk charmeuse like an underlining. So it's not, it's lined, but it's really almost underlined because all the seams are facing towards the outside of the garment. The lining is not loose at all. It's, I treat each piece like one. And on the outside of the jacket, if you look to the right, that's where the seam is. The seam is sewn towards the outside of the garment and I wrapped it with bias, uh, bias binding, basically. It's almost like, a Hong Kong finish, but not quite. So it's bias binding on all the entire outside. So you sew the entire garment towards the outside, the right side of the garment, and then add bias binding. And it turned out really fun. It's still one of my favorite tops and jackets. It's so clever. I am learning so much. That is like amazing. And that's just something you could do with any pattern. You have a pattern, well, sew all the seams to the outside and wrap them with bias. And People would be like, how did you do that? It's just something different. Now, the one on the right is super easy. You could do that to restyle, refashion, whatever. That's just some, um, and that's, I have that on my YouTube channel from It's So Easy TV. And that is just a simple tank top that I sewed up and I bought some lace trim at the fabric store and just hand stitched it in place. Actually, I think that one had a whole trim on it and I added it. I added it to the neckline and then I added bias uh, or binding over it just to enclose it. But you could just hand stitch that on too or stitch it with a stretch stitch, like that triple stitch on your sewing machine, then it'll stretch. We have a little section on dyeing um, fabrics. So this is the first. This is dyeing fabric. The, the jacket on the left is my Chloe jacket, my brand new pattern that just chipped out today. I'm so excited. <laughs> It's super great for beginners because there's no lining. The inside's all bias trim, which is cool. But I tied this with the, the hand dyed fabrics because the pink jacket is cotton sateen and I hand dyed that, but I actually <laughs> painted it with bleach. So I laid out seven yards of this fabric in my old studio and I had bleach in a bowl with some sugar and the sugar made it, um, Oh, it's thicker? Yeah, thicker. Ah. And a paintbrush, and I just brushed all over. And then I had a spray bottle with some more bleach. And I just 
kept spraying and brushing until I liked the look and then I threw in the wash and <laughs> and there is the jacket now. <laughs> That's incredible because um, using bleach has its own kind of worries like uh, definitely you know, health and safety announcement. It needs to be in a well ventilated area, people. Like, definitely, definitely, definitely. You can even get sent to the hospital if you're not careful. But I, I was not, by the way. <gasps> so, the big like, kind of a joke in my family is that's the hijacket. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, because I thought that I had, this was in my old office and I had the back door open thinking that would be enough ventilation. It was not. So, I'm on the floor painting this thing with bleach and and then I painted more and I painted more. My husband came in and he's like, what is wrong with you? My eyes are all red. I was oh. so out of it. Yeah, not good at all. So I'm laughing about it now. I was not laughing about then. I actually have a mask, but I didn't put it on because I was thinking the door was open. It was fine. So definitely air, 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 or do it in the garage or something and have air because that bleach is so strong. Yeah, I we had to do a, an assignment at school, uh, and when we were doing it, uh, the teacher was like, "Okay, if you're going to do bleach, you have to have to go outside because someone actually got sent to the hospital with breathing problems because they didn't. And it wasn't one of those just do it because it's good for you ones. I thought I had it right here. I was going to show you, but um, yeah, I just um, it's probably hard to see. I used um, a doily. Hey, with, um, People come by. It's okay. They'll say hi to you. What is that? It was just an example. It's like a doily, and I cut out the middle of it, and then used a spray bottle. It was, but I I should have gone back and did it again. But you know, when you're in school and you're doing fifty different samples for, for different different types of things. But yeah, so you could do lots of cool stuff with bleach, and That's even like cool. I love that. Yeah, even if you paint on it after you've done that. So maybe you do one stage with removing some color, and then you do another stage where you add some color. That could be cool. That's really pretty. So I think we have some more photos of that too. I, that is an amazing coat. I like. I would never have guessed. Like it looks too planned and too perfect. It, it's amazing. Right, and it was a mess. So that's my butler trench, but it's not a pattern yet. But it will be someday before I die. <laughs> and I think it's a close up of um, the trench. I mean, the coat. Yeah, that's a close up of the trench. I sent that because a couple other things, just for those that are looking for something for the holidays that they want to refashion or it doesn't have, you know, if you're watching this in the middle of summer, it doesn't mean you have to wait for the holidays. Um, the buttons are covered there. I, I made those out of, I learned this from one of my Chanel books and I always said if she was still alive, we'd be best friends. So yeah. it's a curtain, like the curtain rod, the plastic curtain rod and I wrapped fabric around it lined the back of it and then added a button in the middle so those are custom buttons because it's impossible to find buttons that big that will match what you need and then all bound buttonholes so that's something though that you could add to any garment that you have design your own buttons which is very fun and then the shirt on the right is just from one of my first fashion shows it's still one of my favorites uh the it's uh hand dyed silk charmeuse and the jeans which is a long story, so I won't share, but those <laughs> of you that know about my first pair of jeans that I decided to distress with a drill and a sander, that's, mm -hmm. those are the famous jeans. And that's my friend Amy wearing them. So <laughs> <laughs> someday I'll share that story again. But yeah, but anyways, it's a hand dyed top, silk charmeuse, um, and it's cut on the bias. And that was just wrapped in a couple rubber bands and it turned out great. And yeah, I think there's a couple of photos in a little bit that show like kind of the process of the rubber bands to the dyeing to the um, to the final product. But even another great example on your jeans, contrast stitching. You could do that anywhere and it can make it look anything you make. It'll make it look different than the next person. Yeah, Right. Make your own jeans. Once you do it, you, it's hard to buy them unless you run out of time. Uh, I think I forgot to spin that photo around. <laughs> Oh, it looks better that way. <laughs> uh, that one, I just actually just found that dress last week. Um, I made it years ago, but it's um, silk noil, and I hand dyed it with um, fiber reactive dyes. This is one I did in the pattern review. I don't know how many of you are members of pattern review, but I have a class on there for hand dyeing fabrics, and this is where this is when I made that, and it turned out really fun. It's a little bit too bright to wear out, but I use it. It works great in fashion shows. <laughs> Oh yes, here's the one that we were, I was mentioning. So it shows you putting the elastics on some fabric. Yeah, I just did little twists, a little rubber band, 
twist it up and then this this is a sweater I think this is my circle sweater that I made for it so easy and so and then I dyed it and you end up with all these little cute I didn't want too tie dyed so if you mm. do the little twist with the rubber band and then dye it it looks great mm. it gives it more of like almost not quite a texture but instead of being so obvious it's quite cool right and is this bleach as well <laughs> that's the top that uh, oh gosh Don you should have been there so oh. last weekend, <laughs> last weekend I had a fashion show and I taught a class first where I showed this top so this top actually for those that followed through Instagram it started black I took dye out of it and it turned into oh I would say baby Baby, do do. I only know that because my sister had three kids under two years old. So I thought I cannot wear this top around. It looks like a big diaper. So then I added dye to it and it turned out awesome. So I made this top and it's a super huge collar. And I don't know how many of you, I can't see who is here that was in the fashion show. So I had a fashion show last weekend in Novi. And I always joke that one of the models wears something backwards or sideways. So. <laughs> Like the Kate skirt always comes out with the zipper in the back, even though it's supposed to be on the side, so it looks like a cone. Well, she came out with this top upside down. It's the first ever. Upside down. I have to tell you, it was cute as ever. I have a whole new pattern idea now, but the collar was down. <laughs> so um, it was priceless. I'm, I got to go through my photos and see if I got a good photo of it. But that's all hand dyed. So that actually started black. It's a rayon. Took dye out of it and then added dye to it. So just another idea. Wow. Yeah, it's not just one thing. There's lots of different, yeah, even with dyeing, there's so many possibilities. I would say rayon and silk are my two absolute favorites. Oh, I love that. What was that? Um, I, I was just going to wait until you're done. I didn't interrupt, sorry. I never know when the slides are done. Um, that was just uh, some applique. Well, just hand stitching. Yeah, I, is that, um, um, well, what's it called? There's a name for it. Well, I know there's Alabama chain stitching, but this wasn't that. I hadn't heard of that before when I did this. I was just, I had this great big jean jacket that I made. And I it was, love that. It was just big. And then I'm like, it needs something because it's just this big blue blob. Um, but I love it. But I, so I did this on the outside and it looks much better now that I've washed it a few times. And don't look too closely at the hand stitching because I'm not fantastic at it. It's gorgeous. In fact, uh, Vicky said Chishiko. That's what I was thinking, Chishiko, where it looks like hand uh, stitches. I didn't know if you did it by hand or by machine. That is gorgeous. Yeah, I, it was a lot of fun. And um, yeah, so I, I just put a couple examples of like things like that. That and This was the other one. This was a bought fabric and I was going to make a cardigan out of it. And then I looked at the back and I was like, oh, I really want to do something with that and make it stand out. So I just just hand stitched the one flower. There's nowhere else is there any color. And um, I really like it. Like it just, I think it almost looked too busy there, but when you do the red flower, it gives it a focus. It, it's, it totally changes the whole look. Yeah, and it was just like, uh, it's a very stable kind of stretch, but quite stable. And um, it was just that fabric land for us is like Joanne's. That's so, cool. Yeah, so those were two examples. Um, I also grabbed a couple of quick, quick things. Um, I love the idea of just doing, uh, if you wanna do something, you can put your initials, but why not put it on like the pocket of your shirt or by the side seam in the same color maybe as um, the shirt. So it's almost like this little secret, you know, something that you've got that you can share with people or there's tons and tons of like a lot of these things i get a lot of stuff from secondhand stores and you see a lot of the cross stitchy things and you think oh really tiny it kind of looks cute but i don't want to put something like that on but what if you did it really big like re you know you can you can put things on it to to personalize things and um no i love that idea that you have about the um initials or monogram or something like that uh, what a great idea that if you're even giving a gift to someone, if it's even something you bought, you could still embroider something on the inside or add their initials or something like that that makes it so custom. Oh, and 
I mean, they used to do that all the time. This is like when my grandmother did. Um, I was probably oh, hand stitched at that time. Beautiful. It, yeah, so there's there's lots of little things that you can do. Um, I think when we were talking before, uh, we were mentioning that maybe even on an inside of coat, you know, when no one can see it on the, the back neck, you could put something there. I've seen people embroider on top of collars with cheeky little comments or underneath the collar on your stand, you can write like a, not a whole sentence, but something that goes around. So, I mean, there's lots of different ways. It doesn't all have to look cutesy. It could look like you just have to look at any of the things that Angela showed. Like that is amazing. Like those sleeves, you know, there's nothing cutesy old fashioned about those. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, um, it depends. <laughs> no, no, That's no. what it's embroidered with. <laughs> yeah, um, and as we mentioned um, before, like you could dye or you can do screen printing on your design, and it doesn't have to be something that's, um, that's super crazy. That's like a skirt. Is that that screen printed? Yeah. So you, it can be a simple line drawing, and you can put it on a skirt, on a bag, on a, on the front of your your dress shirt you can machine stitch a simple line you know like there's like freehand there's so many cool things you can do to take those patterns that you already have at home those tnt patterns those tried and tested and true patterns and just make them a little bit cooler i love that i love that screen printing that's next next on my list i don't think it's coming up soon but it's next on my list because i love it it's so cool and you can make my whole thing is making your own custom fabric. Well, screen printing is a sure way to do that. Mm, I can't wait till you have your custom fabric line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, words out. <laughs> yeah. I'll let you know if it ever happens. In the meantime, you just have to follow me and make your own fabric. Yep. Yep. That sounds like a great idea. Um, any hints on using metallic thread for embroidery? Oh, it's funny. That's been my big discussion for about a month now. Oh, okay. Everyone has their own version of that, of what to do. And I would say, and this is, doesn't just come from me. I've been asking some of the, some of the best embroidery people that I know that do this all the time. Cause I, you know, I learn as well. I don't know everything. I take tips from them. Metallic thread, a couple things. Uh, use an embroidery needle or a metallic needle. I actually use a denim jean needle. So that's still out there as far as which one you prefer, but it really depends on the fabric that you're doing it on. I still use a denim jean needle and I've had no problems. Slow your machine down. That is a consensus across all of the avenues because you just have to give that machine a little bit more time. Otherwise it spins, like it just turns into this knot of a mess. So it also depends what thread you're using. I am not going to say my favorite or my least favorite. I use actual, well, I use brother embroidery thread. Um, I've used quite a few others. And so I'm leaving it at that. You have to test it yourself. If you feel the thread and you feel like uh, rough, nubby edges, maybe go to the next one. Yep. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Um, slow the machine down. And also if you're still having problems, I have a separate uh, spool holder that I put to the side and I put my thread on that and let it kind of come up and ease through before it comes to the embroidery machine. And that helps. If I'm really having a hot mess, which you can tell <laughs> I've been through a few of these, I will actually embroider on a slow-mo and I will hold my hand up here holding the embroidery thread to keep it, to make sure that it's not tangling. And so that's like a desperate situation. So first, Needle, second, slow your machine down, and then you should be okay. Does the tool have stretch by Denise? That's a great question. Thank you. They all have great questions. Very good question. Um, yes and no. I try to find one that has just a light stretch, uh, just so it's more comfortable to wear. I have made it without stretch, but you end up with more wrinkles when you move your arm. So if you can find just a light stretch, very soft, very soft. So when you hold it, if it's stiff, put it in a gift bag. <laughs> Don't put it on your body. So it should just drape softly. And you know, you could even just go to Joanne Fabrics. I keep mentioning that because it's the one fabric store that pretty much all of us have in our neighborhood somewhere. They've got two full rows of tulle, but they're all different levels. So feel it. 
experiment with it. It's not very expensive. You can even test embroidering on it to see what it looks like. But if it's stiff, use it for a candle or a gift. Make sure it's soft. And if you stretch it from grain line to grain line, you don't want a lot of stretch. You just want a little. And you have to be very careful because that tool will actually stretch out of shape. So be careful of that. So you want a little bit of stretch if you can find it, but still use a pattern for non-stretch because you don't want it to be fitted. If you're going to go for the stretch, use a mesh. That's been a new thing. I actually just got three new bolts of mesh in, and that stretches. You can embroider, and it looks great, and you don't have to worry about it stretching out of shape. That's mesh, mesh or tool, two different things. This is a, a quick question. Uh, Yvonne says, do you leave your embroidery machine running while you do other things? Hmm. I do. I know. But I'm usually in an area that if I can hear, I mean, for those of you that have been in class with me, if I could be on the other side of the room and I'll hear a noise and I'll be like, stop that, you just broke a needle. Or I mean, I know the noises because I do this all the time. Um, so I will, I will, I usually have three embroidery machines going at the same time. If I'm working on a project, it's like all out and changing needles and things like that. But I keep my ears going to hear if there's something going on. And also, if you're working on something that's on the actual garment that you know that if this screws up, you're gonna to have to pull out these stitches or then I usually stay pretty close within like eyes reach or fingers reach to turn it off. Very good advice. Um, we have two questions left. One's quick and the other one I don't I don't know. So Arnell, hello Arnell. She would like to know and I would love to know this. Hi do Arnell. Get, do you get your ideas at night when you can't sleep or do they just come to you? <laughs> Well, when I was up at four in the morning yesterday, <laughs> um, I would say both. For years, all through college, and when I designed for customers nonstop, that was about 20 years. So I would keep a notepad next to my bed, or like a sketch pad, because I would wake up in the middle of the night with an idea, but you're, you know, you're so tired. How many of you remember your dreams? You'll think, you know what? I had the worst dream last night, but I can't remember what yeah. happened. Um, so I would get into the habit. If I'd have a dream, I would sketch out what I was dreaming. It was just, and then it became like just a habit. And I would wake up and think, wow, that's a gorgeous dress. I would have no recollection how it got there, or it might be a trim or something weird. So, okay. But I don't do that anymore. I keep a notepad next to my bed with ideas and I write ideas before I go to bed and I write ideas if I wake up. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I usually come to the computer because now I design most of my outfits with CAD software. So I will get up and start manipulating a pattern. So um, I would say they just come whenever. I, there's no rhyme or reason. My most fabric. If I'm touching fabric, if I'm looking at fabric, if I'm, that's when my most inspiration, it's not even watching other people with outfits, it's fabric. Like what would that fabric look like in this area? So fabric store, I get in big trouble. <laughs> Thus, the bank with the safe in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's fabulous. And the last one, um, this is um, Linda Nichols. Hello, Linda. I want to embroider on two children's sweaters. One light cotton, the other cotton, but more bulky. Any tips for two successful Christmas gifts? Hmm. Um, you know, just without without seeing the fabric and see just a couple quick things that you might want to consider it. Um, if it's really thick, use a topper. Um, I use water topper, uh, just a light water topping stabilizer to make those stitches kind of stand up and not in bed. Kind of like I just did a couple towels. And actually, I did fleece on my live show last week. And talk about bonehead. I was just like <laughs> trying to think what this would look like. I forgot to raise my needle, uh, my presser foot up, so it started to like mesh all the fleece together. And I totally forgot to put a cover, like a water soluble. I just use a topper over it. And I'll use a water topper st stabilizer a basting stitch around it to hold that in place. And then that keeps the stitches above. I've also used, and this is kind of a no-no, but um, I'll share it anyways. <laughs> no disclaimer on any brands or things like that. But uh, you know the bags that you get from um, 
like the dry cleaners, it's really thin plastic. So I will cut a piece and put it on top and embroider on top of that. You didn't hear from me, but it will keep your stitches nice and loft on top of that thick cotton. Now make sure you tear all the plastic away, especially if it's a kid's clothes, uh, which you would do anyways. But um, the only other thing is I would make sure that whatever you have on the inside, you either use the fusible, inter uh, I always say interfacing, stabilizer, almost the same thing. Something like that so it's soft against the skin. And if you have a lot of stitches that are rough, then actually press another piece of fusible interfacing over it to keep it soft. So there you go. That was kind of quick. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so many fantastic tips. Goodness me. I don't know where you get all your ideas from, but it's... <laughs> That it sounds, yeah, just looking at everything that you've made, just, I, I get millions. It's kind of like a science fair at my office. Yeah. Depends what's going on that day, but today was shipping patterns, but. <laughs> yeah, your new pattern. Tomorrow so. is uh, needle felting, so we'll yeah. see. I haven't forgot about you, Linda. It was uh, Sing oh, Singer. And Linda wanted to know what the name of your book you had up earlier. Yep, the Singer Instruction for Art Embroidery and Lace Work. And I mean, there are lots of other different, like Singer has newer newer books too on decorative stitching as well. Have, have you have you seen this series? Yeah, you probably have. There's I like have a whole seen that. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole whole series on um, different types of. Whoops, too much shine there. Um, machine books. This Singer has some really fantastic books as well. Lots of. There's so many great books out there. It's just not good. It's not good. <laughs> I love books. You know, and you know, I love books and I love magazines. And I don't, sometimes I don't have time to read them right away. But I love them because it's inspirational. Uh, sometimes I learn about new people that are doing things. But most of the time it's like, oh, I never thought about doing that. It might be something on a quilt that I would never do. But I would do it on a garment, which you always have to keep your eyes open for things like that. And there's always something to learn. I learn something all the time. Even as much as I sew and everything, uh, I always there's always an opportunity for learning. So just always keep your ears open. Even if you're kind of in a creative funk, which we can all go through, <laughs> um, still keep your ears open and take notes. And then have your notebook when you're all ready to go and you're ready to jump back in. And I mean, with all the sampling that you do, it's it's no, like that definitely helps with the learning, you know, process as well. It makes makes it so you'll be more successful in the end. Yes, but guess yeah, definitely gonna let you go. We've gone way over time, but it was so much fun. And I, I heard I, Gwen come around the corner, and then he must have gone through the other <laughs> side. This is like our family room and our living rooms over there. He must have got around. He was afraid. He comes into the show all the time, so he must just be like, so, I hope. He's not streaking to the hot tub or something. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. <laughs> Just giving you a good laugh. <laughs> well, I guess you're going to have a great evening. So, <laughs> Oh, Don, thank you so much for having me. I love being on your show, and I love watching your show. And Wolfpack, it's great to see you here and everyone else. Um, it's always great to support fellow sewers. And, uh, but, Don, I love your work that you do on the show, and congratulations to you. Yeah, thank you. Well, have a fantastic night. Say hi to the hubby for us, and uh, we'll, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds good. Bye, everyone. See you tomorrow. Bye. Super duper quickly, um, today uh, is uh, international say thank you to your patron day. Did you know that? Um, I have patrons on the platform, uh, patrons on the platform, patrons. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Try saying that three times fast. So it's International Day. You're supposed to thank them. I thank them every week because they're absolutely amazing and they're the reason why I can keep doing the show. Um, so thank you, Diane, Lorianne, Becky, Kyle, Anne, and their other ladies. Thank you so much. So International um, Thank Your Patron Day. Um, and I just want to say ne next show is going to be with Claire from Beautiful, Beautiful Things. And then we have the from the questionnaire, the 2019 talent celebration questionnaire on December 3rd, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about some of the people who did really well and some not really well, who you guys think did awesome this year. And yeah, to everyone who watched tonight, it was fantastic seeing you. Thank you very much. And again, to Angela, she is out of this world amazing. I'm thrilled that she came on. So I hope you have a great night and a great week. See you later. Bye.